Uh, I'm really pleased to present some of our latest work um, in developing a novel animal origin free HPSC culture medium with you today. Um, the session will cover three different parts. Uh, and we'll speak to the development of products to advance stem cell research. Uh, with the first part focusing on addressing safety concerns of HPSC culture conditions, and part two discussing methods for scale up and expansion of HPSCs in 3D culture. Finally, part three will focus on the development of protocols for efficient differentiation of HPSCs to monocytes and TNNK cells. Today, I will uh, discuss steps that will be taken to simplify the path for researchers looking to transition their work to the clinic in the future. It really is exciting to see that the field of regenerative medicine is moving towards the clinic. The regulatory requirements for researchers looking to make these next steps are currently evolving. To support the needs of our translational customers, we currently offer several high quality media. These include CGMP manufactured MTZER1 and MTZER Plus, where animal derived raw materials have been assessed for viral and pathogen safety. Alternatively, we offer teaser E8 manufactured to ISO 9001, which is a simplified animal component free formulation. However, this formulation does still contain recombinant proteins derived from mammalian cell lines. But in order to further support researchers and meet the needs of the field, we sought to design a robust, safe and effective novel HPSC culture medium with animal origin free traceability to help mitigate, mitigate risk and simplify the path to the clinic for researchers concerned about meeting the, the evolving regulatory standards of the future. This new medium was developed with a clearly defined path to meet CGMP standards and optimized, um, and optimized to improve consistency and expansion even in the absence of animal derived components. We recognize that definitions for AOF traceability can be confusing and unclear, and often these definitions can be different depending on the region providing regulatory guidance or depending on the individual company selling the AOF product. We developed teaser AOF with animal origin free traceability of the raw materials to the secondary level of manufacturing. What we mean by the term animal origin free at stem cell is that the final product is not manufactured using any raw material ingredients derived from an animal. So this includes humans. And the raw materials themselves used to manufacture the final product must be produced by or extracted from plants, yeast, or cell-free systems. Having this secondary level of animal origin-free traceability differs teaser AOF from animal component-free media. It's worth noting that some companies define AOF only to the primary level of traceability, which would be classified as ACF according to our definitions. For these reasons, it's critical to assess these definitions quite carefully when sourcing AOF products for your research. For the next half of my presentation, I'm pleased to share some of the data generated from HPSCs maintained in teaser AOF. Displayed here are representative images of two human ES and two IPS cell lines maintained as aggregates on either Matrigel or Vitronectin XF for greater than 10 passages. HPSCs maintained in teaser AOF exhibit homogeneous colony morphology with tightly packed uh, cells and, col and colonies with smooth and defined edges. HPSCs in teaser AOF were flexibly fed and media was replaced on a restricted feed schedule where we performed a single feed to skip one day and fed with twice the volume of media when skipping two days of feeds. We have listed the restricted feed schedules that we followed in the table shown below. It's worth noting that we recommend feeding cultures nearer to the end of the passage when confluence reaches its highest points. To allow for a flexible feeding and to reduce the burden and cost to labs, we've developed teaser AOF with stabilized components. Here we show that stabilization of native FGF2 in teaser AOF yields greater than 37% of time zero FGF content after 72 hours at 37 degrees. This is compared to teaser E8, which is not a stabilized formulation, which retains less than 5% FGF2 after just 24 hours. Here we demonstrate equivalent colony morphology between daily fed human ES and IPS cell lines on the left and cells maintained uh, on a restricted feed schedule on the right. To ensure that we were not introducing or selecting for chromosomal abnormalities by culturing in teaser AOF, 
um, on, on restricted feed schedules, we performed G-banded carrier type analysis on four HPSC lines carried for greater than 10 passages and found that our cells were karyotypically normal as shown in a representative karyogram. We also used the qPCR-based HPSC genetic analysis kit to routinely screen our cultures for commonly detected chromosomal abnormalities in HPSCs and did not detect any abnormalities in cell lines maintained in teaser AOF. Likewise, low spontaneous differentiation is observed in HPSCs maintained in teaser AOF and markers of the undifferentiated state TRA160 and OCT4 are detected at high levels when assessed by flow cytometry at passage 5 and passage 10. It was really important for us to develop a robust and reliable media formulation to, make, to meet our customers' needs and to do so in the absence of animal components. What we found was that the inclusion of recombinant human albumin improved media performance and reliability while, while allowing media to retain its animal origin-free status. While percent plating efficiency and per passage fold expansion are historically variable parameters for aggregate culture, we averaged these parameters over 10 passages and found that HPSC aggregates and teaser AOF shown in the orange bars displayed improved attachment over low protein media displayed in gray and that this correlated with greater overall expansion. In short, compared to low protein medium, we had increased confidence in reliably propagating cells long term, particularly undefined matrices such as vitronectin XF, where, where attachment and expansion can be poor in low protein media formulations. Additionally, we observed improved cloning efficiencies when seeding single cells at clonal densities in teaser AOF plus rock inhibitor, as shown on the graph on the left. Comparatively, no colonies were observed in teaser E8 or CGMP competitor media when cloned with rock inhibitor. Additionally, if I can direct your attention to the graph on the right, when cloner was used as a supplement to enhance attachment and survival at clonal densities, cloning efficiencies were significantly improved in all media conditions. Here it is worth noting that cloning and teaser AOF in particular resulted in greater consistency between the two cell lines tested and significantly improved cloning compared to CGMP competitor media. Finally, we've demonstrated that HPSCs maintained in teaser AOF for greater than five passages are capable of differentiation to the three germ layers, mesoderm, ectoderm, and definitive endoderm, with comparable performance to existing teaser media formulations. Additionally, we have preliminary data to support compatibility with different calls with currently. Here we show high cardiac troponin T expression by flow cytometry and by immunostaining of an IPS uh, cell line maintained in teaser AOF and differentiated using the stem diff cardiomyocyte kit. Furthermore, we demonstrate differentiation to day 10 hepatic progenitors through expression of AT A AFP, HNF1 beta, and CK19 by flow cytometry and morphology characteristic of day 10 hepatic progenitors. In summary, we have developed a robust HPSC culture media to suit the needs of researchers looking to move their research towards the clinic. HPSCs and teaser AOF retain high cell quality when using daily or flexible feed schedules. And the addition of recombinant albumin improves media consistency and reduces cell line to cell line variability. Cloning efficiency is significantly improved with either rock inhibitor or cloner supplementation compared to CGMP competitor media and HPSCs maintained in teaser AOF are compatible with downstream differentiation protocols. We are really excited to announce that teaser AOF medium will be launched early in 2021 and will be sold under CGMP within a year. I would really like to thank all the members of the HPSC team that have worked on this project and remind you to visit poster 188 this afternoon and the stem cell booth after the session is over. Now I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Hi, Kim. Thanks for an uh, excellent talk there. And uh, just to all those in the audience, feel free to include any questions that you do have to the speaker and any that we uh, that you might have later on in the presentation, we can also come back to at the end of their session. So first question that we have coming in, is teaser AOF chemically defined? Yeah, teaser AOF is not chemically defined. Um, 
However, it, we have taken steps to simplify the formulation and um, and, uh, and and remove all animal com containing components. And the second question is, uh, is there a cost advantage over teaser E8? So um, unfortunately, no, the, the, the cost is still, um, it's more comparable to um, M-teaser than teaser E8. Uh, teaser E8 has uh, very minimal components and um, like I said, is, is not manufactured under, under GMP. Um, so there is a, a, a cost savings with uh, teaser E8 uh, comparatively, but, but we believe that um, the increase in cost with teaser AOF is, um, value is, 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 is a value because of the robust nature of this media. And uh, we have time for a couple more questions. And the next <laughs> one is uh, coming in is that their comment was, this media looks like it was developed for static culture, but have you done any development for suspension or have it tested in suspension at this time? Yes, yeah, so um, we're we're hoping to uh, to continue work on this project and and um, expand our uh, our use of it into three D expansion as well. But um, this will be coming in the future. And I think we have time for uh, I'll grab one more question. And uh, does this media uh, work with all all matrices? I know that you showed a couple in there, <laughs> but is it with other matrices as well? Yeah, so um, the most of our work was done on uh, using vitronectin XF as our matrix. Um, however, we've done testing on Matrigel, which again isn't pro probably not the matrix that you would want to use if you were choosing an animal origin-free formulation, and that you would choose a more defined matrix such as vitronectin. However, we're um, we have a, a, some data to support use of uh, laminin five two one um, as well, and and good performance in this matrix matrix as well. All right. Thank you very much, Kim.